Coming up, the Icon building sale this week sets the pace and likely increases in commercial property values in Ipswich CBD. Sold this week for a premium of $144.9 million, its second sale in fewer than 10 years, it begs the question, what if Council's former property arm, Ipswich City Properties, hadn't been wound up under political pressure and Icon hadn't been sold the first time round before completion? It's Saturday, September 11, 2021, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. On today's show, a reflection of what might have been if some circumstances had been different. In 2008, the city centre was already in some decline and an idea was hatched by council to break a redevelopment deadlock with the then private owner of Ipswich City Square Shopping Centre. Council, with the support of the state government, would go on to buy the shopping centre and undertake the redevelopment. This audio from a promotional video issued at the time oozes optimism for our city's future. Ipswich City Centre has been the sleeping giant of Queensland just waiting for the day when it could rise to its rightful position as a major regional centre of the southeast. That day has come with the launch of the Ipswich Regional Centre Strategy, a strategy powered by an innovative mix of catalytic projects designed to transform Ipswich Centre into a world-class city. The Ipswich City Council and the Queensland Government have been working closely to create a blueprint for the Ipswich City Centre that will stimulate new opportunities for the business and residential community. This planning blueprint will see the private sector participate in making Ipswich a truly world-class city. It was also flagged at the time that the CBD could be declared a state development area if the private owner didn't sell. Ipswich City Properties, a council-owned company, was created to acquire the shopping centre with the support and oversight of the state government. In early 2009, the deal to buy Ipswich City Square was completed and council had control over significant parcels of CBD commercial property. Less than four weeks after taking ownership, politics began to get in the way of good decision-making. The naysayers were already nipping at the heels of council. There were supporters like CBD stalwart chemist Bob Slater who said at the time, there would be good times ahead, and to quote Bob, we've just got to hang on and wait. Sadly, many couldn't. In terms of initial progress, plans moved ahead quite quickly for a commercial development of this size. Council announced a joint venture partner with Leighton Properties in December 2010. The first stage began mid-2011 with the demolition of the corner of Brisbane and Bell Streets. You might remember that's where McDonald's was on the corner with two levels of shopping. Photos and newspaper articles in 2011 show happy faces from council and state government representatives pleased that work had finally begun. Move ahead to late 2011 with the demolition work complete, then it was time to start on the Icon Tower proper. Really, it began in earnest at the start of 2012. Icon Tower at 117 Brisbane Street was officially opened on November 26, 2013. It was the original first stage of the CBD redevelopment initiated by Ipswich City Council. Publicity before construction began also stated the entire redevelopment of the former Ipswich City Square shopping centre would be a 10 to 15 year project. This means the project is still within that original time frame. Council purchased the entire shopping centre for about $45 million in 2009. The Icon Corner was sold to Cromwell Property Group for $93 million before construction began. According to the McGrath-Nickel Report in 2019, Council received nearly $17 million as part of the proceeds of that $93 million sale. Remember, the Icon Corner was only part of the entire Ipswich City Square shopping centre. The rest of the shopping centre remained standing. Much has been made of the 2019 McGrath-Nickel report, which highlighted the negative $78 million value of Ipswich City Properties' assets at a point in time. Two years after that damning report, 
Who would have thought we'd be hearing an announcement by Cromwell Property Group on September 7, just four days ago, that it sold the Icon building for a massive $144.9 million to Castle Rock? What if, and I know it's a big what if, but what if Council had held on to the Icon building until now? Would that $78 million negative number have been cleared in one transaction? We'll never know. But what this sale does signal is a sharp rise in Ipswich CBD property values. Council's medium to long-term plans to hold on to commercial property in the CBD must now come under review. It may be able to dispose of these properties for a handsome profit sooner than originally planned once they're fully tenanted. We won't know the balance sheet numbers until the final property sale is completed, possibly in a few years. What we do know is that Council owns its new administration building, 1 Nicholas Street, library building and the new Tulma Place Civic Square. These should now be considered by ratepayers as priceless assets to the city. With this movement upwards in property values in the CBD, could it be that Council then realises the original dream from 2008 of revitalising the city centre at little or no cost to ratepayers? Again, with the Icon sale, any rewriting of history or claiming credit for previous council decisions made more than a decade ago should be avoided by some current councillors and senior council managers. Revitalisation of Ipswich CBD was always going to be fraught with danger and many hurdles. But finally, we are seeing what the city centre can be like in the future. We should never lose sight of that. So let me finish this episode with these closing words from the Ipswich Regional Centre Strategy video. Ipswich is waking to a new day where its location is now being recognised as vital to the Western Corridor. Just 40 minutes from the state's capital and barely an hour from the Gold Coast and international ports, it is well positioned to take advantage of its strategic location within a booming southeast Queensland. Old towns make the best new towns. Ipswich has a century and a half of history and style. It's been on a journey of rediscovery since the 1800s that's about to take this proud city to an even grander future. The state and local government strategy is the framework of this grand future, but only the support of the community and private sector will make it a reality. A quick reminder, you'll find some handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the Donate button on the homepage to make a payment through PayPal. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcasts, or play Ipswich Today from smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening.